My name is Michael Hunter. Today we are cooking bison tomahawk ribeyes. I've got an entire bison roast in front of me with the bone in. We're going to clean this up a little bit and we're cooking these right on the fire. So I've got the fire cooking, but we want this to die down a bit. So we'll get this trimmed up. I'm going to French these bones and let's pick this up so you, you guys can see it. It's a seven bone rib and we're just going to cut all the meat out in between the rib bones, French them up and cut our tomahawk steak. So right here you can see the eye of the roast. We don't want to cut back any more uh, fat than here uh, because what happens the bone is going to, the, the meat's going to fall off the bone while it's cooking. So we'll, we'll make a cut right about here and then just follow it all the way down to the other side. And then take a peek at the other side so we're not cutting into the, uh, the eye over there. It does kind of turn a bit, so just be mindful of that. And then we'll just cut this off. And all this stuff is, is great in burger um, or in sausage. It's nice and fatty. So you can throw this in the grinder or just uh, put it in the freezer and use it at a later date because it is really great meat. And then from there, We'll go in between the bones and just stop right at our cut. And then if you want to get real fancy, you can take some string and tie it around the bone and pull it off or just use, use your boning knife or the back of a knife to scrape off the sinew and really clean up those bones. And again, all the meat between the bones is great in your ground. <laughs> all right, so I've scraped out our bones here and you can see they're nice and shiny. Um, and I'm just gonna follow the bone and cut this into seven steaks. If you want, you could wrap these bones with tin foil. I don't think our flame is gonna, is gonna burn it, but if you want, that's an option too. So I'm just gonna cut down and follow the bones. The chine bone has been removed. That's a bone that runs all along here, so you can just use your knife and cut straight down. All right, now as always, we want to season our meat with salt and pepper and a little bit of olive oil before we hit it on the grill. So we got some kosher salt, kosher salt or sea salt. My favorite. Iodized salt just comes, comes out being really salty. Um, and kosher salt, sea salt, just better for you. And don't be shy with the salt. A piece of meat like this is probably close to two pounds. So you can be really generous with the amount of salt. All right, so our steaks are nicely seasoned. Our coals are looking pretty good. The trick here is we don't want, they're fat pieces of meat. So the trick is we don't want to burn them because they are gonna take a little bit longer to cook. All right, so I think these are ready to flip. They've been on here for three or four minutes. We just want to get some nice char marks on either side. So as our steaks are cooking, we're going to do a little chanterelle risotto. Again, chanterelles are in season. Perfect accompaniment to this dish is nice, rich uh, mushroom rice. So I've got some onion already chopped. I'm going to saute off. Had this pan just sort of Hanging out over the fire, staying warm. It should be hot. Sweat off our onion. I'm gonna toast our rice off in this pan while the onions sweat down. Okay, so our rice is uh, toasted off. I'm gonna add our chanterelles. I've just loosely ripped these 
So there's big chunks, small chunks. And these are gonna sweat and shrink a bit, so I've got tons of mushrooms in here. This, we want this to taste like chanterelles. So my mushrooms are sweating down with the, uh, with the rice. We've got some butter in there, some salt, and I'm gonna add some white wine. You wanna add the white wine before the stock, because we're gonna boil off that kind of raw alcohol flavor. Uh, if you put the wine in at the end, you're still gonna taste the alcohol and not just the flavor of the wine. So wine first, cook it off, and then we'll add the stock. And my favorite all-time sauce for ribeyes and especially you know tomahawk stuff like this is chimichurri sauce. And we're gonna make that with jalapenos, garlic, cilantro, parsley, lemon, and lots of olive oil. So I'm gonna chop all this up. Our steaks are, these ones are finished, those ones are just cooking a little bit longer. Risotto's going. By the time I finish this chimichurri, we're gonna be ready to eat. Neat little trick with the garlic for the chimichurri. I've got it chopped, but just add a little salt to it. And then you can use the side of your knife and just use that salt to grind it up. What that does is it gives you a cured garlic taste so it's not so hot in your sauce. And the, uh, the salt acts like almost like a sandpaper and you can mash it into a paste and just uh, adds a nice, nicer garlic flavor to the sauce. I like to keep the seeds in the jalapenos for the chimichurri, but they might be really hot if that's not to your taste. Feel free to take them out, but I like that heat. All right, I've got all my herbs chopped. I'm gonna add a bit more salt, and we're gonna add a ton of olive oil because that's gonna make the consistency of our sauce. And I've got four lemons here I'm gonna juice into our bowl. Now that all of my wine has been absorbed into the rice, I'm gonna add my stock. Our rice is cooked for our risotto, but we gotta finish it. And the magic touch is butter and Parmesan cheese. So this is still really hot, so this butter's gonna melt with the cheese just to make it a little bit more creamier. And then I'll stir it just until all the lumps of butter are gone. But you, you wanna be generous with the amount of cheese as well. All right, so I can feel that I think these are done, but I like to take my meat for medium rare to uh, about 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And by the time you rest it, it's gonna gain about 10 degrees to finish at around 130 for a perfect medium rare. Um, if you take it off at 130, it's gonna rest over. So always try and pull it off a bit earlier than the, uh, the standard charts say, uh, because once you pull it off and, and set it on the counter, it's actually still cooking. And it's kind of a neat experiment. You can take it off and put the temperature in it, put the temperature probe in it, and then check it in 10 minutes and it actually goes up. So these are done. I'm gonna rest them now for about 10 minutes before we slice them. Okay, our steak's been rested for 10 minutes. I finished my risotto with some Parmesan cheese and a little bit of basil. And now our steaks are ready to slice. So let's do this here, I'm excited. So just cut down the bone. You can kind of see it curves down. Cut down along the bone. You kind of check your doneness there. It's still nice and red. And ribeyes are well marbled. So we're gonna slice this thin. And it's beautiful, medium rare inside. All right, I can't wait to share this with you. Here's our bison tomahawks with chimichurri. Let's have another look at that. I'm so excited to eat that. 
Hope you guys enjoy the recipe. Once again, I'm Michael Hunter from Antler Restaurant Toronto at the Mossy Oak Camp. Enjoy.